Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to continue the series on the Petrov defense with a very unsound uh, variation, the Cochrane Gambit, uh, which White can play sacrificing a piece. Uh, as requested by a subscriber, I decided to look into it. I didn't really take the variation seriously, but I've spent the last day, I would say, studying it at, and actually found a variation which seems okay for White, and I found a game which proves that on the highest level. We're going to look at that game. And uh, I'm preparing for a league game, which I'm playing tomorrow morning, and I plan to play a very aggressive variation. Uh, so I was kind of in the mood uh, for looking at gambits and the suspicious lines. I'm just going to say uh, before I start that this should be uh, handled with care and that it's really bad for white if uh, black knows what he's doing but as i said there are variations in which white could be fine strangely the engines don't seem to be able to evaluate the position properly so okay uh, let's get into the opening uh, e4 e5 knight f3 knight f6 the petrov and now white goes for his, for his most principled move knight takes e5 d6 and now uh, knight to f3 is the main move as we have already seen in the last few videos, uh, we were looking at knight to f3, knight takes uh, e4, and then we were looking at d4, the classical, knight c3, the Nimcovic, and queen to e2, the Kozio. We are also going to look at the move knight to d3, which was the move uh, Magnus Carlsen chose against Fabiano Caruana in the World Championship match. The game ended in a draw. And today we are going to look at the Cochrane Gambit. And the Cochrane Gambit is simply sacrificing the knight, not retreating it, but taking on f7. So knight takes f7. Uh, if you turn on the engine now, it's almost minus one for black. Uh, it's a, a piece for a pawn, so definitely not an equal trade. Piece for two pawns, really. Uh, so... Black has nothing better to do but take the knight. That's the first thing black has to take. Any other move loses even more material, so it's not playable. I was looking at the move queen to e7, but it doesn't really do much after knight takes, and whatever black does here, white is going to be fine. So after knight takes f7, black has to take. And now uh, we come to a crossroads of what theory says is the most common move, and what I found is the best move. And uh, the two moves played here are either d4 or knight c3. Both of them seem to be playable. Uh, however, d4 seems to end up worse for white in almost every line. And knight to c3 seems to end up equal if white knows what he's doing, which is really strange. But after knight to c3, as we are going to see, white develops a strong initiative. And if he plays uh, the proper plans, then black is going to remain undeveloped. And especially his ha rook a rook is going to be out of the game, which is going to be ample compensation for uh, white being a piece down. But let's look at d4 first. Now d4, uh, after king to f7, d4 has been played 120 times. Uh, white won 38% of the games. The games. Uh, so white actually scores well, but the problem is that black can... Uh, play well as well and then white loses basically so if black is unprepared d4 can be winning but if black is prepared which most petrov players are then d4 is losing so d4 uh, black's main uh, and only response basically is c5 if black takes the pawn then black is losing immediately giving back the piece let's just get that out of the way so after uh, d4 uh, if black uh, is greedy takes the pawn then the move queen h5 check uh, wins immediately you have to play g6 or uh, king here whichever one you play uh, white is going to take the knight uh, moving your king somewhere else loses also so the the best defense is this and after queen to d5 check uh, you give up you give up the knight so <clears throat> this isn't playable so after d4 black should continue with c5 after c5, uh, white has two moves, uh, one of them isn't really that good, uh, and even though it might seem aggressive and developing with tempo, it's a bad move, and that's bishop c4 check. After d5, e takes d5, bishop d6, castles, uh, you don't really have an attack anymore, and black is going to develop his rook to e8 and be perfectly fine. The fact that your d-pawn is blocking your bishop 
uh, sort of helps helps black and uh, even though white here has uh, three pawns for the piece uh, I think it's better for black much better for black because you're playing a piece down and your bishop is out of play and it's going to remain out of play so after c5 I wouldn't recommend bishop c4 check even though it might seem tempting I would recommend dc5 this is the main move and the best move the pawn is pinned of course uh, black cannot take uh, because the the queen is hanging there are some tricks with bishop check but not at the moment because if you take your pawn is blocking the bishop so you're simply losing the queen so black has only one response and that's the move d5 another response is knight c6 but i think that's inferior uh, after after d takes c5 knight to c6 uh, bishop c4 check bishop e6 bishop takes king takes castles uh, seems to be better for black and uh, you can see that white is lacking development of course and usually when you sacrifice a piece you are doing that for the initiative and for rapid development and for bringing all of your pieces next to your opponent's king in this case it's uh, visually obvious that white doesn't have anything because no pieces are developed so after king f7 queen d3 protecting the pawn queen d7 rook d1 uh, queen e6 cd6 rook d8 this pawn isn't really dangerous once again uh, doesn't really do much white has three pawns for the piece now but black is uh, defending well and in fact this position is uh, busted it's almost minus two for for black so bishop f4 knight h5 bishop g3 takes takes bishop d6 taking the pawn and after knight c3 rook uh, h to f8 black is going to tuck his king away to g8 and white can basically resign so the move knight to c6 i wouldn't recommend so after uh, yeah i i yeah uh, the move knight to c6 is also playable but uh, d5 is better so d5 uh, d5 uh, releases some of the tension from the center on on the d6 square and uh, gives several options to white uh, if you take here then black is going to recapture with either piece and simply be better so the best move and the only move played here is the move e5 chasing the knight away and now uh, you can either uh, move your knight to e4 immediately which uh, isn't really considered that good queen to e8 is considered to be a better move after queen to e8 now the pawn is pinned uh, white cannot capture so queen to e2 unpinning knight e4 knight to d2 offering a trade but black can simply capture here uh, knight takes c5 knight to f3 defending uh, sorry okay uh, knight c6 bishop e3 bishop e6 castles and uh, this position is basically losing for white uh, white doesn't have anything uh, white is a piece down and uh, there is almost no compensation whatever white does here he's going to be worse and that's uh, in principle why the move d4 doesn't work so if uh, after knight takes f7 king takes f7 white plays d4 he is accepting to be uh, almost minus two and the piece down for almost nothing if black plays well so what i would advise the petrov player to do here study the move d4 as it is the most commonly played move study the defenses study the plans and learn this variation after c5 dc5 d5 e5 this is the key variation it's going to be played most often and uh, yeah after queen to e8 black is black is fine i want to look at one game uh yeah okay i want to look at two games actually but we are going to look at them later i couldn't find too many uh, high rated games with the move d4 uh, the highest rated game is nigel short uh, alexei shirov and shirov of course won that game this is the only super grandmaster game so nigel short is the only super grandmaster that went for d4 and uh, yeah it's basically not a good move so let's look at some other options <clears throat> after knight takes f7 king takes f7 i would recommend the move knight to c3 and knight to c3 seems very interesting now what's the difference uh, the difference is that you have another piece in play and uh, black can't really stop d4 in the future anyway so once d4 comes it's going to be much stronger because you have another piece in play this also means that after developing your bishop your rook is also quicker to come into play and all of your pieces sort of have scope d4 is happening d4 is going to open up the center so whichever side is able to bring uh, more pieces to the attack is going to be better so if uh, black cannot do anything to stop the move d4 then why not develop your pieces first so this is my reasoning i, I think it's uh, i think it's okay 
The only thing black can do to stop d4 is, is a Sicilian idea with c5. And uh, c5 is the main move, but as we are going to see, it doesn't really do much to stop d4. c5, uh, white now can develop with tempo. The main move, bishop c4 check. Uh, after bishop c4 check, black's best try is bishop e6, trying to exchange some pieces. And now white gets to draw the black king out to the center to play. Bishop e6, king e6. Now you play d4. Okay, so now the d4 has happened, you once again have the pin on the queen. So you are threatening to take, winning a pawn. Uh, the king is stuck in the center as opposed to the last variation where it had entry to the g8 square from f7, so that's favorable. Your dark squared bishop is open, uh, you can castle, you can get the queen to the center to e2, to f3, to g4, to h5, and uh, you can get your a1 rook in to play faster. So after d4, black's best attempt here is to play king to f7, just trying to remove his king out of harm's way, and you win a pawn, dc5. Once again, uh, black cannot take. Uh, so knight to c6 is played here, castles, dc5 now, and now queen to e2. You don't really care about uh, black winning the pawn back, you are already a, a piece down, so it's pretty irrelevant. And now we come to the point of the variation. After uh, queen to e8, which is considered the best uh, attempt for black, stopping the move e5, white plays the move f4. And in my opinion, after f4, white has enough compensation for the piece. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, the h8 rook, as I said, is completely out of play and it looks to remain that way. Well, on the other hand, white is a few moves away, let's say bishop e3 or bishop uh, to d2, and rook to d1, and all of the white pieces are developed. Uh, along with that, white is looking forward to the move e5, uh, disrupting black's uh, defenses and removing the knight from f6. And once the knight is removed from f6, you can see that the queen has c4, the queen has h5, and uh, all of the pieces are coming in. So the main move here is rook to d8, and white plays e5, knight to d5, trying to exchange. But now white simply ignores that and continues with the move f5. Uh, f5 is the most aggressive uh, is the most aggressive move and I've been looking at this variation for quite some time uh, the main move is to take on c3 now uh, the other moves that were played there are actually no more games from this position uh, it sort of stops here but let's see uh, if black takes here with the queen that's one thing then you take the queen black takes and you have this pin so that's fairly annoying uh, if black captures here with the knight then you can simply check here and uh, yeah the game is uh, the game is much better for white all of a sudden so these variations i'm sorry the engine seems to be turned on uh, so these variations can be fairly tricky and i think it's very easy for black to go wrong here so let's look at this position again f4 rook to d8 e5 knight to d5 f5 so black must, must be reasoning okay why can't i just take the e5 pawn and be carefree uh, queen takes seems fairly reasonable, but as I said, this move rook to d1 is annoying and almost unstoppable, giving white the advantage. If you take with the knight, then queen to h5 seems almost winning. So black has to be extra care careful here, and I think that an inexperienced player isn't going to find knight c3 over the board. So it's very tricky. But knight c3 is the best move. Now white doesn't immediately recapture, he interposes the move e6 check. Uh, to make sure he doesn't hang a pawn afterwards. King g8 now, bc3, and black continues with bishop to e7. In this position, even though the engine says it's equal or slightly, slightly better for black, I would rather have white. Uh, the simple reason for that is uh, that I, I'm basically an exchange up, and black has a knight for a rook. The h8 rook isn't going anywhere for a while, and my e6 pawn and my f5 pawn are creating sort of a bind on, on black's king position, which uh, is hard to break through. The dark squares are open for my bishop, uh, the rook can come into the game, the queen can come into the game. You can basically get three attacking pieces into play in a matter of moves. Uh, you also have some ideas with rook to b1, putting pressure on, on, on the b7 pawn. Uh, you can develop your bishop to a6, get your other rook into the center. So it's a very rich position which promises uh, possibilities to white. On the other hand, what can black do? I have no idea. Uh, I've been looking at this position and if I were black, I 
I really couldn't find the move. I would be struggling to find the move. Let's say white continues normally, like bishop to f4, trying to put the bishop on the on the best possible active square. What can black do here? How do you untangle from this position? It seems very hard. So yeah, uh, if we come back to the opening, e5, knight f3, knight f6, knight e5, d6, knight takes f7, a very risky gambit, but... Uh, there are some possibilities for for white. So here I wouldn't recommend the main move with d4. I would recommend the move knight to c3. And let's see how Wesselin Topalov uh, played this position. King takes f7, knight to c3 was played. And we are following the line we just looked at the main line for a while. c5, bishop c4 check, bishop e6, bishop e6 check. Uh, king takes e6, uh, d4 now, king to f7 dc5 black cannot take he plays knight c6 and here instead of castling uh Veselin topalov played the move queen to e2 which is a uh, slight inaccuracy uh, castling is best but still it's playable he went for the same plans the difference is that his king is now stuck in the center and sort of open to attacks so queen to e2 queen d7 bishop to e3 another slight inaccuracy once again best was to castle dc5 now f4 rook to e8 e5 uh, we have the same idea, but with the king still being on e1, which you could argue doesn't matter, but I think it does. Uh, knight to g4, rook to d1, attacking the queen, queen to f5. Now he finally did castle, and uh, we have a very similar situation. And uh, the h8 rook is once again out of play. Uh, white has a lot more activity, and white has better rooks. And uh, you could argue all better pieces. h5 was played here by Vladimir Kramnik. Bishop to c1, saving the bishop. Knight to d4, getting all of his pieces into the game. But now queen c4 check. King g6, h3 chasing war knight away. Knight h6. Knight b5, threatening to exchange the other knight. Uh, a6, and now the exchange does happen. And here, I think white is better. Once again... First of all, you haven't sacrificed anything, really. You have three pawns for the piece, and black still has to solve the issue of the rook. So, I think this is the most successful example of the Cochrane Gambit for white, which I've managed to find. Uh, this game was uh, Topalov versus Kramnik, played in 1999, so before the engines were good, so it was really hard to find engine lines. And the engine is confused throughout the game. I mean... Here it says it's equal or slightly, slightly better for black, but as I said, which human would have the black pieces here? I don't think anybody would. The game ended in a draw after, after a while. <clears throat> okay, another game I want to look at uh, is Vasily Ivanchuk versus Lee Chao, played in 2016, so a more recent game uh, with engines used. Uh, once again, we have king takes f7, knight c3 by Ivanchuk, he knows that it's the best move. And here Li Chao played a very strange idea, g6... Uh, this move I haven't really seen uh, before, that's why I chose this game. And Li Chao won with the move, so this might be a great idea for black. d4, king g7, now he has an extra square for the king, which is fine. Bishop e3, knight g4 attacking the bishop, bishop f4, bishop e7, queen to d2, rook f8, bishop e2 attacking the knight, g5, bishop g3, knight c6. And now, if you look at the evaluation bar, white is already much better, so... You can see that it's easy to go wrong. So my conclusion was that g6 isn't such a smart idea if you follow it up with g5. However, uh, the fact that he was a piece up uh, paid off later on, as we're going to see. Knight d5, uh, f3 was apparently the only move to gain that advantage, promised, but it's really hard to find such moves. h6, uh, bishop takes g4, bishop takes g4, f3 now, bishop e6, castles queenside. Now, after this series of moves, it's uh, apparently uh, almost over and much better for black. So you can see that it's an up and down position in which you have to play extremely accurately. And I think that Vasily Vanchuk wanted to surprise Li Chao with the Cochrane Gambit and then he got surprised himself because g6 is a very rarely played move. So if you want to play this position with the white pieces, I would recommend looking at this move because the players with black are most likely going to know it. Even though it's not ideal, it sort of confu confuses your plans and you cannot go for the normal ideas with uh, d4 later on and, and stuff like that. So coming back to the, to, the, to the opening, I really don't know what to say. I might try it out in a blitz game. I've never played it, obviously. I, I will try it out in a blitz game because I know the ideas now and I'm going to practice it. Because I feel that 
In a Blitz game it could pay off. It seems safer than the King's Gambit and I like the King's Gambit, so I'm going to try it. So let's just go over the main moves. I would recommend the move Knight to c3 here. Black should play c5, Bishop c4 check exchanging the bishops, dragging the king out, now d4. Uh, king f7 is the main move. Uh, c takes d4 has been played, queen b6 has been played, but king f7 definitely better. dc5, knight c6, castles, dc5, queen e2, queen e8, f4. Remember this idea with f4 and then e5 and then f5. And I think this is key. If you push those pawns toward the black king, then uh, the rook on h8 isn't coming out and this is going to be your compensation and eventually your advantage. Okay, uh... I hope you like this variation, I don't normally like covering gun sound variations, but this one was fun. Uh, thank you very much for watching, let me know what you think, let me know if you've played it, and uh, stay tuned for more chess. Bye bye, thank you.